Prospect House Media. And now, prepare yourself for the only weekly podcast you won't want to miss. Welcome to the Ameritocracy Show with Troy Edgar, live from our studios in Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. Hey, everybody. I am Troy Edgar, and welcome to the Ameritocracy Show. Thank you for tuning in and checking it out. It is greatly appreciated. This podcast examines the conditions for personal and economic growth and opportunity across America. This week, I met with Congresswoman Michelle Steele at the NRCC in Washington, D.C. It was so nice catching up with her and meeting with her staff. In this episode, Michelle takes us for a backstage tour of her journey to America from Korea. She discusses her family's first troubling encounter with the government as a small business owner that sparked a different journey for her life as a public servant and tax fighter. Our show is not political and we have guests from both sides of the aisle and we focus on their process and approach to use their talent and hard work to accomplish great things for America. Michelle provides an inspirational perspective for anyone that has thought about running for public office. She graciously thanks her staff and acknowledges what an important job she has in Congress. She ends the interview with an encouraging message to young people. Learn what is really going on and run for office. I hope you enjoy. Good morning, Congresswoman Steele. How are you doing today? Thank you very much for inviting me, Troy. It's so nice seeing you in D.C., not in the district once in a while. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you doing this. We've had a lot of experience together. I was thinking about this when I was preparing for the interview, uh, probably over 15 years. I think my first time that I met you was uh, at a state party, and we were in different locations, Sacramento, Palm Springs, San Diego, Anaheim. And, um, you know, I remember in 2006, newly elected as a city council member and coming and seeing you and you were getting ready for the board of equalization and just your profile you were out there and everybody just seemed to be drawn to you and in politics it's sometimes you got really smart people that they don't have the personality fully to match and uh, the the thing that always struck me with you is the way that you even before you were fully in BOE at the, and who knew you were going to be the congresswoman, you probably did, but it was the amount of mentoring that you would always provide to people that were out there trying to figure it out. So, um, and then eventually you and I had the opportunity of, uh, you were the uh, county supervisor in Orange County, California for the district there. I was the mayor and I got to see you in real action. You know, so you were the chair of the, the board there and did a lot of great stuff for our city and our county. And just, I really appreciate that. And I just wanted to tell you, thank you. And how how grateful I am. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was fun when we were in Palm Spring and Sacramento, San Diego, Anaheim, because we were volunteers at that time. You know, when you really learn the ropes mm -hmm. uh, there, at least, for, you know, here I am, a new in politics, more of a business person. And, you know, you just seem to be natural. I kind of felt a little bit like a fish out of water at the beginning. And, uh, and so, I, again, I think uh, having people that are at certain levels that mentor the folks that are coming in. So uh, that was a great experience. Um, what I wanted to talk a little bit about is, you know, this uh, discussion today is really about the, the process of how you've pursued your American dream and ended up being in Congress. And for a lot of the listeners that are out there that think about going into public service and uh, doing the, the work that you've done. And uh, what I'd, I'd like to do is maybe just start from your origin story and talk a little bit about <laughs> what uh, got you uh, to where we're at. Yeah. You know what? It's really interesting because nobody, none of my friends or none of my families think that she might be a politician someday. No, because I had a very shy personality and I couldn't speak in front of two people. <laughs> and I, it, the first time when I spoke in front of people, it was so dark because I couldn't see anybody. And then I totally forgot my speech that <laughs> I memorized. And it was just, it was just like, um, you have to learn from the beginning and the, from like one plus one yeah. on the math. That's the way it started. So I was born in Korea and my father 
and mother actually both of them were teachers and then my father decided to become a diplomat so um, the first post was in Japan that's the reason that I was raised in Japan and I finished my junior high and high school there and then first year of college and my major was English and you know in Japan that our pronunciation gets a little different than right. what we speak here so when I started speaking uh, McDonald is McDonaldo and my father said you better go to the United States and learn <laughs> proper English so that's the reason he sent me here first and then he passed away so my mom followed with my two younger sisters and then you know my mother teacher all her life in Korea in Japan she has to come here and open up men's clothing shop so I was I did everything actually when I was 19 I was buyer I was salesperson I hired the people I fired the people and you know I did alterations mm -hmm. and I cleaned the stores I did everything there and a few years later my mom said let's move on to the shorter hours because it was seven days working that was a building sandwich shop and then my mom got hit actually she hit, was hit by state board of equalization that you know it's a tax court at the same time they collect sales tax it's about one-third of California total budget and they said no you cheated because you used to pay this much tax and then you know you didn't pay so you cheated you owe us additional tax plus interest and penalty on the top of it I couldn't believe it because I thought that happens only in third world countries right. but oh my god they are harassing innocent taxpayers mm -hmm. so when that seat opened up I told my husband you know that he's been in politics oh, since yeah. he was 14 yep. <laughs> yeah I said I'm running he said no you don't want to do that public office yeah. is really different than what you really think and I said I can do a better job than anybody else. That's the way everything started with my big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and you have a great mentor in your husband, uh, Sean. So it, uh, I, I can imagine that uh, getting that type of advice from someone saying that, it's like you took conviction just to uh, convince the family we're doing this. But Troy, when you are candidate's spouse, yeah. he cannot be a mentor because he takes yeah. everything <laughs> personally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, I think, uh, yeah, my wife, uh, very similar, and, mm -hmm. and she takes the criticism you get uh, equally, too. Yeah. You now, you ran for Board of Equalization. Um, you, you know, the, the moment that you just decided you're going to run for the board, um, you know, now you're running a statewide race. There's four Board of Equalization seats in the state of California. It's one of nine constitutional state offices, mm -hmm. so it's a big mm -hmm. deal. Um, it's hard, like, uh, when I ran for city council, I loved walking door to door. I just, mm -hmm. cause then you have to meet everybody mm -hmm. and good and bad, they either like you at your face or they don't and they slam the door in your face. But you know, at that big of a race, you really need to put together a team and, and, a, and a process. Can you talk just uh, very briefly about, uh, you know, what were your thoughts day zero, you're getting ready to kick this, uh, this race off? Uh, let me tell you, I didn't know what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. It's 9 million constituents, wow. one fourth of California and I, it, it, you know what I did was I had only compassion I didn't know any about anything about taxes I'm not a CPA I'm not an attorney and I just wanted to help, help small business owners and then actually my opponent was a very well-known uh, state senator that who already served assembly for six years mm -hmm. and senate for eight years and wow. he thought that this Asian woman with she doesn't even speak English. How she's running against me, that's what happened. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was very tough, but the first uh, fundraiser that I had my Korean community, they raised, you know what, $130,000 the first wow. day because not that many yeah. Koreans were running, Korean Americans were running that's at right. that time, so they all tried to help. And that, that really, made me that oh I can do it mm -hmm. so and then because I was nobody and I couldn't even hire my campaign manager I couldn't even hire my consultant but after first fundraising that I showed 130,000 suddenly everybody said 
I think you can do it. Mm -hmm. So that's the way everything started. So we just hired a mm -hmm. consultant, campaign manager, and you know what? They're so good at what they are doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a clue what I supposed to mm -hmm. do. So whatever I've been told, I was doing with them. So it was a teamwork. Yeah. So it was after that, it was, well, you cannot say it's much easier because, you, you know, mm -hmm. from Paul's Verdes to all the way to El Centro, it takes five, hour, five hours one way wow. to speak for 10 minutes yeah. at 3 o'clock in the morning <laughs> that we are driving back. Especially my, my campaign manager couldn't drive during the night time. So I was driving oh 3 in the morning and my kids were, what, junior high and yep. junior high at that time. And what am I doing, Michelle? You know, mm -hmm. you you missed all of their concert. They were mm -hmm. like singers. And sometimes I come home late and my husband drives out. Sean, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to go to see a movie. And you know what I do? Without changing my clothes, I just jumped on his car. We go to a movie together. I sl slip through. <laughs> but you know what? At least I'm yeah. with next to him and I you know, try to balance, mm -hmm. that was really tough. But I was very lucky because I've been having always great team that mm -hmm. they are the one did all the work. And we were like, it, it was a great teamwork from the beginning. You know, when you are meeting with people, I, I think there was two factors I know for me uh, in a much smaller um, elected election race. But when you meet people, even for that 10 minute discussion, that gives you such a boost because you actually hear what the problems are there. Um, and then you realize too, kind of what am I fighting for? And it isn't just my experience with my, my parents, it's this one. And so you build up. The other thing I do think is fundraising, uh, that currency of trade um, gets you credibility. Even if you come in and you have a ton of money and you say, hey, I'm going to run, everybody's like, I'm not sure there's something there. But fundraising actually shows people are behind you, um, good or bad. So as you went through, you you did uh, the, the time in the BOE. Um, you very quickly, uh, after you turned out there, talk, talk about the Orange County supervisor uh, experience. Uh, and, and, and you know a lot less uh, people that you're responsible for. It's still a huge number. Well, my husband jaw dropped because every time I said I'm running for next and his jaw drops and he said really only problem is you're not living in the district because since I represented five different counties I said I'm running for Orange County supervisor but I was living in LA County he said you have to live in the district mm -hmm. I said I can make it happen mm -hmm. so within one month I found the house I moved down to Surfside yeah, right beautiful. so that's the way everything happened and you know, you really have to getting into it that nine million to seven hundred fifty thousand in my district, mm -hmm. but three point two million people in Orange County. It's actually much tougher because people want you. Like you know, Troy, you were city council member, you were mayor. You know what? People know what you are doing. Yeah. So that was a little tougher. But you know what? You try to communicate with your constituents and you try to work with them. Mm -hmm. And I think I learned so much at the supervisor level. Yeah, I think um, it was interesting. I remember when sitting watching the point that you made the decision to run in the county, you know, as a city council member, it's, you know, you kind of have a good pulse because, you know, I'm you know, next to Cypress, Huntington Beach, Garden Grove, Seal Beach. Ex Everybody knew you. So it was not like, uh, I know you lived in LA, but I think you had a pretty significant presence in Orange County. So I could see where that nexus would be like not a problem. Um, I was very jealous you moved right next to the beach, but- uh, Hey, it yeah. was 80 or serving <laughs> for Orange County. Yeah, yeah they yeah, all knew yeah, that they, I'm yeah. the tax yeah, yeah. payers advocate at that right. time. Yeah. yeah, you've had a great name there. Can you talk about 2020 starts to come up and you start looking mm -hmm. at the congressional race and, um, you know, again, you just keep living and, and moving your way up the ladder of the American dream. And um, I would just uh, love for you to talk about that just for a moment. Congressional race was really different. You know, um, I didn't know I really wanted to do it because I was really enjoying it in Orange County um, because I was working with it. I mean, working with all the constituents and they all know who I was. And then suddenly, second term of after two years that I had to run for Congress. And I was not really sure that 
I have to travel to because I saw all of my friends at Royce, mm -hmm. Dana Rohrbacher, they were traveling every week and I said, am I ready for that? Mm -hmm. And then, you know what, I decided to run and then COVID hits. You remember, mm -hmm. I was chair for mm -hmm. Orange County supervisors at that time. So we were like, my God, it was so busy. I put business at that committee together. Within a few months, we just opened all the businesses with safety guidelines. Governor got so upset. He was threatening that he's going to cut all the funds for, you know, to we Orange County. closed the beach. He shut down all the, <laughs> yeah. you know, Orange County beaches I only. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. it was fight. So I think that campaign was the toughest one because I kind of knew if I do this, I'm going to win next step. But for Congress, I was very in dark because I was doing the county work as a you know, chair and then tried to do the, um, the campaign. And the day actually the election, the first batches mm -hmm. came in. You remember mm -hmm. that, you know, 805, yep. you get all these numbers. I was 26,000 votes short. I remember that. I mean, I, that, yeah. you know, never really recover. But I really wanted to sleep that mm -hmm. day because after all that years and years and years. Mm -hmm. So I told my husband that we're going to go to meet all of my volunteers. We're going to thank them and then I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna sleep. Mm -hmm. That's the way we put it. But on the way, suddenly my number goes up. Yep. My number goes up around 10 o'clock. We just bypassed the number. So that was really good. And you know what, actually traveling, mm -hmm. you know, a lot, you do a lot too. I really enjoy it mm -hmm. because that five hours, nobody really bothers me. That's, everybody always talks to me like, Troy, how do you do that every, uh, week or two and it's like that's the most peaceful time ever yeah yeah i watch i watch a movie i have mm -hmm. a nice meal i just kind of you know it's just a very uh, relaxing period I, I guess one other point i would make is that i think when you were kind of going through that process those long days meeting people i think you also built a great coalition you know both sides of the aisle this is not a political show but i think that you know people that were you were representing really knew that you were really pragmatic you always put you know the community first and everything that you were doing and i think that that really kind of showed because i was always just surprised like I'd seen your events. I've been to a couple of them and it was just a mixed crowd. It mm -hmm. wasn't like, you know, further maybe south in Orange County you go, it's a little bit different, but um, you did a really good job of kind of connecting the story and the message. Um, kind of in closing, as we kind of get towards the end here, um, because that you do always seem to be super grounded, um, how hard is it here in Washington, D.C. to uh, you know, really stay principled and stay focused on trying to make a difference versus trying to be somebody. You know what? I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. So you just carry out your common sense. That's all you do. And try to work with, you know, of course, my side of aisle, but the other side of aisle too. Because when you talk to them one by one, they all agree that, you know, what we want to do are almost the same. Mm -hmm. I think our delivery is a little different. Mm -hmm. So when you talk to them and you work together and then you can just pass those bills like, you know, baby formula bills mm -hmm. or IRS bills that, you know, they tried to hire 87,000. That was actually my first bill. And under Republican majority, we mm -hmm. passed that. Mm -hmm. So I am just so proud of it. But I always thinking about what my constituents want. Right. So, you know, we. We have so many meetings. When right. I go back mm -hmm. every weekend, mm -hmm. I'm in the district. I talk to my constituents that mm -hmm. what they really want. It's a little different than my previous district to mm -hmm. current district. But you know what? They all concern the same thing, inflation, especially California, crime rates. Crime, Think yeah. about it. So I have a law enforcement advisory board mm -hmm. that, you know what, they all these chiefs, you know, they show up mm -hmm. and we discuss that how we're going to help law enforcement to actually defend us. That's right. So you know what, we always do that. And mm -hmm. veterans, small business advisory board. So I really try to open up my, like, you know, communication with these people. So I think that they are the one helping me. And at the same time, you have to win every two years too. Yeah. So that's another thing that I have a great team. They are dream team that, yeah. you know what, they do, they know 
they know what they do, right? Mm -hmm. So you just trust them and then work together. I never want to be somebody that, mm -hmm. you know, on the top of people. No, I work with people and I'm always same level mm -hmm. as with, you know, my constituents. That really helps me. I not only, you know, am a benefactor of your effort here, but I think I know, you know, a lot of people that I work with here are lobbyists and stuff within the district. And, you, you know, your staff has a really great reputation mm -hmm. here. And it's hard to build uh, build on that. The journey to step into public service and, and you know, everybody that listens to this will see the amount of commitment and effort that you've had to put in the, the 300 mile, five hour drive for 10 minutes. In, any advice that you would give uh, the listeners on your perspective of if you're sitting back considering running for public office that you think would be helpful for them to consider? I think they really have to learn first. You know, I think you and I have the same experiences. We got in, we didn't know what we were doing. But you know what, they go to city council meetings, they go to board of education meetings, they have to learn the process that, you know, what's really going on and what's been really discussed. I think that's really important for me Fortunately, I had a lot of great friends in Congress that, you know, now they all retired. But, you know, we had like a during the dinner, they're discussing about that, you know, what kind of bills and what we are doing. And I was really listening. I was a lot of um, I, involved with, you know, their discussions. And sometimes that I really speak mm -hmm. up. But, you know, other than that, most of the time that one day are talking about things that I try to kind of like observe that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if I was, if I was there, mm -hmm. I were there, then you know what, I can do this way right. and things like that. So people should get in because this is really important job because yes. we're making laws for all the people and we are the one actually, you can feel that, you know, whatever we do next. So. What I am doing is I try to do good things that for taxpayers. So just introduce the um, the taxes that th they can actually keep more taxes in their pocket for yeah. personal income taxes. So I try to do if it was me, then what they think and what I can do better. So you know I got on the Ways and Means Committee and I'm very proud of it. Yeah. And I can do a lot of different things and I can help people. So I really enjoy this job and I think it's just perfect. Every step of the time, I, I've been telling everybody, I really enjoy every step and even flights too, but long <laughs> flights. So I, this is a really good job. Yeah. So you know what, I want all these young people to run. when. I, first generation, I came to this country when I was 19, yep. and I did it. I think these younger generations did do much, much better than where I'm at. So I always want to encourage these people to learn and run. Wow. Well, uh, Michelle, thank you so much for your public service. Thank you for taking the time today to be on the show. I really appreciate it. It's so good seeing you, and I wish you the very best. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thanks again for joining me today on the Ameritocracy Show. Be sure to follow me on social media and our website at troyedgar.com, where you can get more information and sign up for my weekly email. I hope you have a great week.